Welcome to Gearheads, the ultimate destination for everything automotive. I'm Philip. And I'm Skyler. Your host on this thrilling ride to the world of cars. From iconic classics to the latest innovations, we'll explore it all. Whether you're a petrol head or just curious about what drives us, fasten your seatbelts. This is Gearheads, where the journey begins. <laughs> Alpine is a renowned French automotive manufacturer with a rich history dating back to its establishment in 1955. The company was founded by Jean Bordelli, a visionary entrepreneur who had a passion for motorsports and a dream of creating high-performance, lightweight sports cars. The name Alpine was cho chosen as a tribute to the victories achieved by Ridgali vehicles in various Alpine rallies. Yep, exactly. 1955, of course, when they started. And then um, they were a rally company and they have made actually various cars, but... Um, we're naming those off at the end of the video, but this is more about how they started and mm -hmm. how what his uh, vision was yes. of the company. Yep, lightweight sports cars mm -hmm. with high performance. Pretty much what every uh, car company with uh, uh, sports car intentions are, but uh, very many, no, very few achieve the balance. Yes, exactly. But I believe Alpine is the perfect uh, car to uh, mm. talk about for this type of situation on Gearheads. Of course, we love this type of uh, talk about. So then, let's talk about the car brand real quick. They gain recognition in the auto world for its dedication to building agile and style cars. Alpine early success was closely tied to its involvement in motorsports, particularly in rallying. The Alpine A110, introduced in the 1960s, became an icon in the rally world, securing numerous victories and championships in distinctive design, characterizing by the, a lightweight chassis and rear engine layout, contributing its success both on the road and track. As we know, uh, rear engine is the best on track. Mm -hmm. It yep. gives more weight distribution. Yeah, yep, weight distribution, even both uh, to create the best equal and both uh, the car and the road itself, so that way you can perfectly balance that out, of course. Oh, almost like last week, how we were talking about the uh, Alfa Romeo Spider. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, it's just. Uh, almost a road car and a track car yep. all in one. Yep, every day. But this was a little bit more because it's also a rally car. Mm -hmm. So it was a very cool to see not just one thing, not just two things, but three things all combined. Really cool to see. So you can ju not just use it on a track day on the road or on the track, but also on dirt. Mm. In 1973, Alpine entered into a partnership with Renault, making a significant milestone in its history. The collaboration allowed Alpine to benefit from Renault's resources and engineer, engineering expertise while retaining its distinct identif identity. The A3110 introduced in the mid-1970s continued the brand's legacy of producing sporty performance and oriented cars. So this is where uh, they really make the A3110, which is almost a predecessor mm. of the 110, which didn't look as good. No, it think. did not. And it wasn't no. as good. No, not at all. The performance figures weren't as uh, well equipped for the time, 1970s, and it didn't keep up with any other car brand that was trying to do the same thing. Mm. And so they actually performed not as well to what we liked for the 70s. I mean, of course they wouldn't perform now, but even in the 70s, they still didn't perform. Yeah. Um, so despite various challenges and changes in ownership over the years, including a period of uh, dormancy in the late 1990s, Alpine remained an enduring symbol of French automotive craftsmanship. In 2017, the brand experienced a review with the launch of the Alpine A110, a modern reinterpretation of the classic A110. This is new model captured the essence of the original A110 in I can't 
Contributing technology and design elements, the A110 received acclaim for its lightweight construction, precise handling, and elegant styling. Mm. And this is where uh, the Grand Tour, mm -hmm. James May drove this, and he said it was an awesome car. Yep, it was. He was very light and nimble, just like the original one that we were talking about. Mm -hmm. But with the luxuries of modern day and mm -hmm but still had the feeling of a 1970s car. Yeah. The sportiness and agility almost. Yes. So it was not just uh, a road car, but also a rally car. You but, had a track car. Yes. But I don't feel like this one was more rally-ish. I feel like because they wanted more luxury design, it was more of a road car. Yeah, it was more of a road car and track oriented. Yes, exactly. But that's okay because at the end of the day, I mean, modern day it's really hard to get what you want for all three things because at the uh, you want if you want to rally nowadays you usually are going all the way rally or not just part rally and part track car you hardly ever see that nowadays and they were trying to move ahead to the future i believe yes uh the revival of alpine gained further momentum when a group, uh, group renault Renault announced a strategic partnership with Lotus in 2021, a collaboration aimed to, le to leverage the expertise of both brands in su areas such as electric mobility and spa sports car development, signaling Alpine's commitment to staying at the forefront of automotive innovation. Yep. So the journey reflects the resilience of the brand deeply. Re um, yeah. Um, they do do electric nowadays and they're trying to move forward with it. But yeah. Uh, when they partner with Lotus, Lotus started doing the Avasia, mm -hmm. but then they also came out with a Miro, which is a full on uh, manual. Yep. With a little bit, with supercharged V6. Yep. A little bit of a hybrid system, I think. Yeah. Um, I think that varies. That was like, uh, it was a spec. So you could ch choose which uh, type you want. I think they did have the hybrid on it. Mm -hmm. um, but do you even talk about the hybrid system? Even so, kind of, it's very annoying to us because we don't like electric. They're harder to tune. Yes, way harder. And, Tuning is what makes car people a lot more into things. It's just uh, to be able to tune and make your car your car a little bit more is what I like to think about. We like car go fast. Yep, <laughs> exactly. But then we can get to Alpine's journey. It reflects the res uh, resilience of our brand, deeply rooted in motorsports and performance. With every renewed focus on electric and hybrid technologies, Alpine continues to involve embracing the challenges of the automotive industry while staying true to its heritage of creating exceptional driving experiences as it looks forward towards the future. Alpine remains the emblem of French automotive excellency, combining a legacy of motorsports success with uh, committed to cutting edge innovation. Hmm. So this is where they really uh not P, but they're getting close. Yep. Because uh, they probably peaked in the 1950, no, uh, probably when the A10 came out. Yeah. And when the new A10 came out, they peaked again. Then this is probably when they're about to peak again. Because they're just getting more innovation and they're just trying to get the luxury side and, uh, how do I say this? Continuing to, to evolve in electric and everything, making it more comfortable for the person driving, but still making a sporty feeling. Mm -hmm. Yes, but it does say that they are pushing forward for electrification. Mm -hmm. And there's not really much to talk about there. It's just not what we want. It's not where it's where everyone. It's where a lot of people think we're going. I don't actually think. Uh, we're going it, no, I don't think it. Like I don't think our power grid can support it. I have actually a couple of things to back it up, but 
I don't want to talk about it because we do have some people that think it's, it is the future. And I'm not going to hate on electric because the Ramac Nevera is insane. Yes, it's an awesome car. Yep. And if that's the way they're trying to push, I mean, you can't beat performance. And the performance figures are just immaculate. So you can't, you can't hate on it too much. Yeah. Then uh, this is their Formula One history, mm -hmm. which uh, they started back in 2017. Please correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. <laughs> but that's when Renault uh, decided to let Alpine take over. Mm -hmm. So yep. Alpine has a storied history in Formula One, marked by its early participation in the 1960s and 1970s as triumph, victory at the 24 Hours of Le Mans in 1978. The brand re-entered Formula One as Renault, Renault Sport Formula One team in 2016, later rebranded as Alpine F1 team in 2021. It's totally wrong. Embracing its French heritage, the team's distinctive livery mirrors the national flag colors Alpine's innovation and development in Formula One not only emphasizes its commitment to high performance racing, but also serves as a platform for technology innovation. With advancements from the racetrack influencing the development of the road cars as Alpine F1 team navigates the challenges of modern F Formula One, its presence underscores the brand's enduring legacy and dedicates to pushing the boundaries of automotive excellence. I just need a moment to think about all this because I just it's just really cool to see that uh, a current company uh, still wants to have uh, motorsports mm. to go through the whole nine yards. I mean, the thing is, is they love they love to do motorsports and they always keep going. Mm. F one is the latest one that they're doing. I don't know what well, if they do anything else. Obviously, they still make car brands, but they always have done racing. And I think that's what is really cool about Alpine. Hmm. Yeah, that Formula One season hasn't gone the best way this season. No, but uh, their uh, what's his name, Logan Sargent, which was another American that went into Formula One. He scored one point on Alp Alpine. Which was really more than Kevin Magnussen. So, Kevin Magnussen's another uh, American. I'm not hating on him. He's just not the best. No, he follows F1 a lot more than I do. But yeah, uh, I, I'm not an Alpine fan in F1 either. So yeah, I mean. Personally, I'm a McLaren fan all the way, but I mean, you can't hate on me either. No, I can't. Hate on you. But they're not—they're not the best either. Red Bull's for sure the best. Oh um, yeah, it's kind of annoying. What's your favorite F1 race? I mean, sorry, company. Well, deep down, I'm a Ferrari fan, which sure. everyone is. I, I am too. Uh, everyone's a Ferrari fan deep inside. But I do like Red Bull. Yeah. Okay. Well, you can't hate on Red Bull either. I love, I love their commercials, they're funny little, mm. always crazy I little commercials. Yeah, but let's talk back. We got way off track, I'm sorry. Mm. But Alpine, we're gonna go to the original Alpine 110. I wanna talk about its specs real quick. It creates a 1.1 1 .1, 1 .1 liter with a R8 major or R8 Gordon engines. And so, it created about 95 horsepower, and it revved up to 65 r uh, 65,000, sorry, 6,500 rpm. But it was, uh, it's not great performance, I don't think. But to be fair, it was made in the 1970s, and performance compared, um, it was just a really light car too. So it was perfect for what it was capable of rallying and track dig. They were really meant for, um, they're really meant for just every, it's also an everyday vehicle. So you can't hate on it because it has everything that you want 
And even though it's a little uh, dumber down, I don't really want to use that word, but it is because it's not really, not really fully there, but it's okay because it still gives you all the capabilities that it was trying to do. Hmm. Then I got the specs on the new A110, which is electric now. Uh, it's equipped with a 178 kilowatt battery, producing 242 horsepower electric motor with 300 uh, newton meters of torque, uh, made it to a two speed dual clutch gearbox. Interesting. Uh, so we went to a snowmobile show and we saw the dirt bike, electric dirt bike gears. Yeah, we saw this dirt bike and it had gears and I didn't know that you can actually have gears with electrification because usually you just, you don't really see like any electric vehicle you go in that you don't ever see gears. You don't ever see, you know, especially on the dashboard, if you're just trying to look, you'd be like, where is it? That's because I, you usually see only one gear, a small and longer gear. That's why. They usually actually limit them to a certain idea, I mean, a certain, uh, just a speed limiter, but. Yeah, you know, like the Kaiser like Regera, it has no gears. It's One drive, gear. neutral, and reverse. That's all it is. Yeah, it's, it's just, anyway, 250 miles an hour. But that did actually have a twin turbo V8. So that's not electric but it only did have one gear, so you can use it. You can actually have one long gear mm. to create, and depending on how you use it, you can either create a really fast linkage or really long, but a little slower. I don't know how they did that to create one gear because it's still really fast off the bottom too. Yeah, it's really quick. Yeah, but. It was really cool to see that like a cool car company like Isaac figured out one gear can work even on a, on a, a gasser. Yeah, we're getting a little bit off topic. Again. <laughs> so these are their uh, cars. We're gonna talk about that really quickly. So mine's the Alpine Lee Aquarius. Then there's uh, another one, see, uh, called the Alpine A106. Then the Alpine A108. Then the Alpine 110 GT4 model, then yeah. obviously the regular one. Then they made a Le Mans version, mm -hmm. and then it's just called the Alpine A210, which looks beautiful. Mm -hmm. It looks like a Porsche. It does look like a Porsche a lot. We'll put a picture, we'll put a picture of, of that one. There is too many to uh, actually show on here. It just will be very clumpered. Yeah. So. Uh, We'll leave you guys a, a link to where we found uh, this one at, and we'll let you guys look through all of them. But we're just gonna talk, just talk, tell about every single one of them that was that they ever made, because mm -hmm. they didn't actually make that many cars. Then there's the Alpine A310, which is doesn't look as good as the A110, sadly. Nope, it does not. Even though it's newer, we're just getting better into the era. Yeah, so then they made the Alpine Renault Vault 5. And then the Alpine Merikinac. It's uh, almost a weird looking, it's a very weird looking car. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, then there is the Alpine A310, pretty mm -hmm. much what we said before. And then they made the Alpine A442. Mm -hmm. And then they made the Alpine 610 and that's really it. That is really it. And, well, I mean, we could also talk about the brand new 2020, well, it's not brand new, 2017. It's the one they came out with yeah, it, right? still making it, so. Yeah, so technically brand new. Yeah, the a Alpine A110R, I think that's what. I don't think it's right. I believe so. I there's the E and there's just the 110. Oh, so the E was an electric version, then they made a non-electric version too, which, right? Yeah, they made a non-electric version in 2017, and then they ended it in 2022. Then they, uh, uh... Made it electric. Yeah, they made it, they presented it as electric in 2022 also. So they pretty much made 
the same car, just different okay. performance. Mm -hmm. Yes. But um, Alpine, I guess we can end the summary by saying Alpine overall, all a good car company. Hmm. Um, I did remember saying a couple uh, podcasts ago that we were ranking all these cars. So we have, uh, let's start from the top. We have AC. Alfa Romeo. Alfa Romeo. Acura. Acura. So it was Acura, se Acura was second. Then Alfa Romeo. Alfa Romeo. And but then Alfa Romeo beat Acura, I would say. Yeah, That's Alfa Romeo point. beat uh, Acura. And then we have Alpine. Mm -hmm. Where should we rank Alpine? I don't feel like we're, we would be disrespecting it if it went down to fourth. No, I, there's no way that they're down to fourth because Acura, we didn't like Acura. <laughs> Acura, as you saw in the other video, we didn't love Acura. We did not love Acura, but um, I mean, you should tag Acura in that video, by the way. Yeah, you should just be like, I mean, tell them to prove us wrong. I mean, it's okay. I mean. We don't know much about Acura. They and make sure we don't get in the lawsuit, please. Yeah, that would be very We bad. don't need that. No. So, but to conclude, uh, it went, I'd say Alpine. I feel like Alpine was second. Alpine was second? Which one do you like better? I I like Alfa Alf Romeo. Alfa Romeo is, I like it. Alfa Romeo, okay. What? Okay, AC. AC, number Alf one. Alfa Romeo. Alfa Romeo. Alpine. Alpine. Then Acura. Then Acura. Okay, we're gonna, we'll, uh, we'll show that right here. But um, uh, I guess that's the end of that mm -hmm. section. But uh, to first, to conclude, how do you say Alpine? I say Alpine. I'll say Alpine, but we really don't know. You can type that down in the comments too. Yeah, but, see which one's right. Yeah. Because technically he's right, but we live in America, so we love to say Alpine because it just sounds easier to us. Mm -hmm. We're dumb Americans. Yes, we're dumb Americans because we do not like to use French words. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I believe that's the end of Gearheads. Yep. Uh, thank you for watching, and uh, see you later. See you later. <laughs>